What is going on, guys? Welcome in. Welcome back. I am Luke Goodish, author of the real-time thriller Frozen Wrath. And today, as of filming this, is September 30th, 2022, which means Frozen Wrath is officially released worldwide in paperback and ebook format. I can't thank you guys enough for the support so far. The book made it all the way to number 27 in bestsellers for new releases in men's adventure fiction. That's just mind-blowing. It is my sincerest hope that everyone who's read the novel has enjoyed it. And uh, if you haven't picked it up yet, I really hope that you do. And now, for Save for More listeners, I'll be giving a sneak peek of the novel right here and now. Please enjoy the chapter. A spurt of maroon pulp in the land of the wolves. Entering the hellhound bar is like a plunge into the underworld, all the way down, under the cold dirt and into the molten hellfire below down into the belly of the beast. It is dim, low-lit by a few red lights. The smell of stale beer has taken ownership of the room. Vibrations of heavy metal shiver in the soles of Dante's boots. All the humming chatter that was under the reverberations mute upon the old man's entrance. It is only the music between him and the room full of stone faces. Words are tucked tight between the biker's lips, which snapped like traps. A young prospect timidly stands beside the old man. Two men, one thick-necked, the other stick-thin, funnel down toward Dante and the prospect. Is that Dante Gibbs? The thick-necked one says as he and his buddy patter to a stop about a foot away. The flesh-and-bone man sort of leans in and investigates the wrinkled face of the old man, the same way one would scan a new car for imperfections. Dante, that fucker from the Guntown shit? What the fuck? Says the skin and bones. Back outside, Gooch, the big man on the right says. He shoves the hunched prospect with a stiff arm. His other hand claps down around Dante's shoulder. The three of them start toward the bar. Three bombs. We got a founding hound here. It's Dante Gibbs. The two men show and tell Dante to the bartender and surrounding bikers before three sets of mugs and shooters clank down on the bar in front of them. I'm Gunner, the big one who'd been on his right says. And that ugly son of a bitch there is Finch. You knew my pops. Gunner sort of raises his eyebrow in an appeal for connection as he lets his shot sink into the foaming yellow sea of his mug. He watches it bubble its way down to the bottom of the glass. Clay, he finishes, eyes back on Dante. You're Clay Cooper's boy. Dante's head lifts from the startle of time. His eyes widen in astonishment of how fast the sands slip through the hourglass. Just a blink before, and it was Clay there with the same youthful face next to him in this hollow corpse of a bar. Where the fuck you been? I didn't even know you were still alive. Finch butts in, splashing his shooter into the mug, spoiling the sentimentality. I was locked up 25 years. Got out an old man, and that was it. What's well, so what you're saying? Old dudes can't be in the club? We got plenty of old men still loyal to the colors. Why you been silent on us? Finch is too close now. Dante inches away. He recognizes the gravel wall behind the kid's eyes. Hey, get bent, Finch, Gunner says, staring hard at his friend. Dante's the reason we still got colors. He ain't the reason I got colors. His eyes peel back over to Dante's. That gun town shit, that really go down like that? What really happened? Drunk asshole said the wrong thing to the wrong guy. Dante's face is flat. He adds a light nod at the end of his words to assure the kid catches the hint. He sees in his static eyes that he does. The two hold a silent battle for a moment as Finch throws back his car bomb. He slams the glass with a show of anger. Dante can feel the recoil in the tips of his fingers. He watches Finch leave him and Gunner without a word. Dante does not take his eyes off the thin figure for a while. Finch is a real fucking prick. Forget that asshole. Gunner raises his glass. The old man does the same, and the two take their car bombs with four massive gulps. Dante grunts, shaking away the burn and a quick wag of his face from side to side. That warm, stinging flush of remembrance washes out the question of Maxwell. He doesn't quite notice it trail down and out of his body until it's gone. He fights the curl of his lips. It helps to see Finch leaned into the ear of another biker. A small pocket of stone faces all look to Dante and the old man's face returns to granite. The memory foam imprint of a question still lingers on Gunner's face when the old man looks back his way. What's that? 
Dante asks, leaning in but looking over Gunner's shoulder to the pack of whispering men steadily growing in size. Feeling the buzzing sickness of whiskey and beer intensify under the magnifying glass of onlooking killers brings it all back. Maxwell, skin stripped, hanging from a meat hook somewhere in the inferno, breaks the time machine. Stepping out of the orange haze, he again is a man displaced. I said you're still with your same old lady. Dante almost misses it this time, too. Um, no, Melosa, no. We split. 25 years is a long time to be away. Shoot, yeah, it's all the life I got. I just always remember your old lady picking me and DJ up from school on Fridays. She feels like last week. Gunner's smile washes away. The mention of Dante's son makes the old man reach for his empty glass. His fingers let go reluctantly, unsatisfied. I'm still chewed up about DJ. Gunner looks at Dante. I didn't know him. Dante's voice is flat. He focuses on the glowing eyes of the men gathered at the other end of the bar. Finch points and the old man's jaw tightens. It seems they are closer, closing in quick. I gotta ask something, Gunner. You gotta be straight with me. The young man just shifts in his lean and waits for Dante to continue. Town seems to think that missing boy can be found in the inferno. The pack of hungry hellhounds is right on them now. They are led by Finch. The inferno ain't none of your business, old timer. Finch says. Again, he is too close. Gunner turns toward the crowd. What's going on? What you boys doing? Dante's blood. Wrong. He ain't. He wanted out so he can get the fuck out. He's a goddamn founding member, Finch. And he's Rev's fucking brother. Don't matter. Not no more. He can fuck right off before we make him. Finch's wild eyes bounce to Dante. His look says, your move. Oh, I'm shaking. Dante stays cool, though he feels the red filling his face, and his fist closes up, turning white with anticipation. Buck, throw this rusty old cunt to the snow, Finch says, looking over his shoulder. Dante steps forward. The crowd doesn't move. Who can only be Buck breaks from the pack. Hey, hey, stay right there, Buck, Dante says to the ball of inked up muscle. You don't want to push me into a corner. I promise you that. Dante sees the room flickering lightly. Black flames lick against his ribs. His eyes begin gauging distance. We getting you mad, old oh, man? Yeah, you want to see where that fucking goes? Dante almost makes his move. Not yet. Oh, you're real tough. I know you got no guns in this bar. Figuring that means you got no balls either. Well, we do have guns in the truck outside. Show them, Buck. Buck steps forward with a grunt. The telegraph in the overly muscled man's movements saves Dante's life. The old man doesn't realize the riot inside of him broke loose, not until the pinch of glass wiggling into his palm brings him back. Dante's hand is slit down the center. A large brown piece of beer bottle is lodged into the meat. That's when he notices Buck pumping blood into the cedar floorboards. Slivers of that same glass jut from Buck's temple and jaw. He gargles on pained confusion as the glass snuffs the life from him. The war is on. Time undulates at speed. Below, the vibrating floor becomes water. His blood becomes ice. Dante feels a lump of Finch's trachea filling his palm. It presses that piece of bottle left over from his work on Buck deeper into his tendons. He hooks his leg behind the thin man and slams him to the ground. From the eruption of chaos comes another heavy biker. He tackles Dante. The old man's ribs crash against the bar top. Feeling the large weight shift off balance, Dante slithers. Both hands grip the back of the big man's bald head. Two strikes against the thick wooden bar and he feels the splitting start. The man's skull snaps apart with the crunch of a frozen lake. Three men are pulling at Dante and beating what they can with their brass-coated knuckles. Dante turns with a high guard. Strikes come like a lightning storm over his body. Numbing zaps singe the feeling from his fingers. Brass knuckles bust against Dante's elbows and turn the tendons in his forearms to braided steel. As he dips to the side, one man goes down with a counter elbow. Rolling under a strike, knuckles nick the top of Dante's head. His knees fill with fire. Lunging up to clinch the closest body, Dante knees the man back while the others flock, bruise, and batter his sides. A headbutt slouches the man out of Dante's grip. His head dribbles to the rest against the dusty floor. The brawl moves like a flood into the center of the barroom. Dante grabs a tall-necked bottle of beer. 
It doesn't break on the first skull. It explodes against the second. The jagged shark teeth plunge into the neck of the next man. A bottle shifts a tooth loose in Dante's mouth as it shunks against his beard. He answers by pulling the attacker in and jamming five bladed uppercuts into his stomach. The warm pulp slimes over his hand and down his wrist. What feels like a cold metal chills its way through the meat in his back, stabbed. His hand tugs the handle of a buck knife. It slides out and his eyes scan to see the thin prospect who escorted him into the bar. He is running in and pointing the business end of a 12 gauge his way. All the bikers stop and shout toward the naive prospect. So far out of his element, you could see his knees rattle. The hounds scream out attempts to save themselves from the firestorm of molten pellets. In the hiccup of their attention, Dante takes off and bashes all his weight through the stiff door in the back of the barroom. The exit he always used to take when shit went south.